Now you're ready to sew. What you need for this part is you're going to need your scissors, your pinned mermaid uh, tail that's pin, been pinned together, uh, the extra uh, bowl to put the extra pins in, a bobbin, uh, you need 100% polyester uh, thread and actually they recommended this. I did a Google search to see what is the best type of thread to use for uh, swimsuit type fabric and they did say that 100% um, polyester, let me get see that, and the highest quality. So I went ahead and I got the Guterman, I think it is, yeah, the Guterman type of thread. And then the type of needle that you need to have for your sewing machine is the Jersey ballpoint needles um, for your sewing machine. And depending on how thick of a fabric that you got, it will determine what size needle. I'm just going to go with a 12 on mine, and I like to replace my needle um, after I've sewn a couple of them. So since I just got done making about six of them, I'm going to go ahead and replace my needle on my sewing machine. Okay, I have threaded my machine, got my bobbin set up, and now I am ready to start sewing the mermaid tail together. What you want to do is start at the very top waistline of the fabric, and I generally go to about a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then you just start sewing. And don't forget your back stitch. And you just start sewing all the way around. See how you can you can sew right over those pins. You don't have to pull them out each time. So as you sew down the side of the mermaid tail. I usually stop every so often and I check the underneath uh, stitch just to make sure that the sewing machine isn't skipping at all. So like for example, you can see right here, the machine sort of skipped as it was getting started so I'm going to want to go back over that stitch again so that it holds better. So again, I just look every, you know, every about every foot or so, I go ahead and I check the stitch and make sure that the stitch underneath is still doing. Um, you know, looks good and is tight. As you get down closer to the fin, usually I usually slow down a little bit because you got to go around corners and stuff. So you just continue on turning the corner as you go around the mermaid tail again. You do not have to pull out the pins as you sew along, so just keep sewing. Again, checking your stitch every so often. Okay, here's an example of where you would need to go back, okay? And it's just the type of fabric I think that it is, that it does this, but um, every so often it kind of does this little skip thing right here. So I'm going to go back over those areas just to make sure that my fin um, stays together well. Now I'm getting ready to go around the corner of the first part of the fin and I kind of go a little bit closer to the edge for these. And I usually stop and I put the needle down and then I usually pull this up and then turn the fabric a little bit. And then lift up the, the pressure the foot and then kind of turn my fabric around the corner and then you keep sewing sometimes your machine will act up I'm not gonna lie it will and just like my thread just broke um, we're gonna go ahead and get that fixed and I'll be right back okay so we're keeping it real today and this just happened and it's normal sometimes it's going to do this um, and you just have to go ahead and kind of re-thread your machine get it back set up and then you're going to just start where it started messing up again and this happens on every single type of fabric that i've used um, so if any of you experts out there uh, i'm not considered an expert by any means but um, this does happen every time that i've sewn and i can only relate it to maybe it's the kind of fabric 
that it is. But if it does this, just make sure that you go back over it um, because it will, um, it has for me, pretty much every time, it, at some point during the sewing process, it does this. So I've re-threaded my machine and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these pins around this corner because I am gonna re-sew around this particular corner where it started messing up. Now if I look on the bottom, you'll see that where it first started is right about here where the stitch is a little bit longer than the rest. So I'm gonna start a little bit before right there and just re-sew over that, that same line. And don't forget to do your back stitch. I'm just sewing right over that same area. And now just to double check. Looks a lot better now. But again, it might do that, and I found that with these fancier fabrics, it happens more often than with just your plain fabrics. Um, it happens more often, I've found, with this type of fabric. So I'm gonna continue sewing around the rest of the mermaid tail, making sure to check and make sure the sewing is going well. When you get to the first corner of where the fin comes to a point, you want to get to that point, and make sure your needle is down, and then you're going to want to take your presser foot up and turn your fabric. And then keep sewing. I have finished around the bottom and I am now coming back up to the edge of the waistband. And then up near the waistband you do want to go with a 5 inch seam allowance. The rest it's around the bottom it doesn't have to be exactly but to get a good snug fit you do want to do your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Pull your thread out and you can clip it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull all these pins out and check our stitching and make sure all the stitching is good and go back over any areas that need to be um, gone back over before we actually um, try it on. To give you an example of what I mean by skipping stitches, um, when I first got started, you can see that the stitch is longer right there than the rest of it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back over that stitch and I'm going to check around the entire area that I've sewn and just go back over any spots that need it. So as I was checking my tail, I found a couple different areas that were actually, um, there were some skipped stitches. So what I did is I went ahead and I changed my needle and I changed to a stretch uh, number 90. I don't know if that was has anything to do with that, but I went ahead and stretched to a 90. My dog got that. She chewed it. Anyways, um, so I stretched it, uh, switched it to that, and it seems to be um, working pretty well, so maybe it was the needle. I don't know. Um, but I went ahead and decided to just go around the whole entire length of the tail again, which basically just gives it more stability. Um, it's like you're double stitching it. So you can always feel free to do that just to make sure that your tail um, does not come apart. Okay, I've sewn around the entire length of the tail and before I actually turn it right side out, um, what I do is I check the fit. Um, so I'm gonna have my model here. Just try it on inside out because if it needs to be taken in, I can easily uh, you know, take it in um, if I need to. So basically she's just gonna try it on and pull it up like a pair of pants. 
but she's not going to take her um, feet all the way down to the bottom. She's going to just go to the very um, where the fin flares out. Okay, so what you're wanting, what are you, what you're looking for here is that it's pretty tight. Um, you want to make sure that it's not going to fall down when they swim. And it looks like we done, we did pretty good with this one. Right? Feel mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So our one is tight as the other ones, but still tight. Okay. But yeah. Okay, so my daughter has tried it on inside out to make sure that it fits um, snugly enough. If for some reason it did not and it was not tight enough, what you would want to do is just kind of bring in your top seam and you know sew it in a little bit um, just to adjust the fit. So you're basically going to just make your seams bigger um, if it is um, too loose. If it is too tight, you will need to you know let out some of the seam, and that's why I like to give you know the seam allowance. So if you need to, um, you can let it out a little bit. Ours was a little bit um, not as tight as some of her other ones, but I figure that it'll give her some growing room and we can maybe use it next summer. So the next step is optional because at this point you could turn it right side out and go ahead and be done because this uh, fabric does not fray so you don't, you know, you don't have to do this step. But what I do is I like to serge the edges of the seams and cut off the extra. And I use this Brother Lock 1034D. So I have a serging machine. Okay, so I'm going to be serging the edges of this mermaid tail. And it is an optional step. You do not have to do this. But if you have a serger, it kind of gives it a, a nice finished look. And so again, I'm just going to start the ends. Now the surgery machine does cut off a little bit of the extra. And then again, I always like to check my seams um, to make sure that they look clean on both sides. I also feel that surging it gives it an extra, um, you know, extra like st uh, sturdiness. Make sure that your fabric is laid out just flat as you go along. You do not have to stop at these two corners when you do these corners. But as you come up on these parts of the tail, you do want to kind of slow down. And what I generally what I generally do is I like stop at the end of it and I go off the edge and then I loop it back around and then continue. Okay, so we're just finishing up the side here of sewing, of serging the edges of your mermaid tail. Have it all a nice surged edge and you're ready for our final part which is putting the fin into the tail. I just want to demonstrate how I go around a corner. So I come pretty close to the edge and usually what I will do is I will actually go off the edge of the fabric to turn the corner and then you just put it put it back through there and then continue on okay we have now finished sewing around the entire tail and what I like to do is trim off the edges 
of where you did your surging. Okay, I think that's about it. And now you will have the moment of truth. We can turn the fin right side out. Our fin is sewed to cut out, cut out and sewn together.